Yes, to see you again, okay? So, very good. to join number Okay. Was removed from the meeting. Thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, good morning, everyone. So, there was some problem yesterday because of the internet. So, I have to come to an MC to take your class again, but never mind. Okay, so uh, there were, were two classes for this uh, cardiomyopathy and myocarditis. Okay, um, but uh, it's not uh, too long, so I'll try to. Um, finish it within uh, an hour, okay? So, cardiomyopathy and myocarditis. So, if you talk about cardiomyopathy, okay, so cardiomyopathies, these are the diseases affecting the heart muscles, okay? But whenever you are asked the definition, okay, you, you have to be complete, okay? So, complete definition is required. So, by definition, this cardiomyopathy, these are the group of diseases that primarily affect the heart muscle and are not the result of any congenital acquired valvular, hypertensive, coronary arterial, or pericardial abnormalities, okay? So, it mainly affects the heart muscles and there should not be Okay, so keep in your mind. So there should not be any congenital acquired valvular, hypertensive, coronary arterial or pericardial diseases. Okay, so it has to be the disease of the heart muscle only. Okay, so uh, talking about the uh, classification of cardiomyopathy, okay, so we can divide it according to the etiology and according to the morphology, okay? So etiological uh, classification uh, divides this cardiomyopathy into primary cardiomyopathy, where the disease is there and it predominantly involves the myocardium and is of unknown causes. And secondary cardiomyopathy uh, includes all the myocardial diseases of known cause or uh, often with association with some systemic diseases like uh, um, a part of uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, um, a part of amyloidosis, and chronic alcohol abuse. Okay. Again, dividing the subdividing this primary cardiomyopathy, it can be idiopathic, it can be familial, it can be eosinophilic endomyocardial diseases and endomyocardial fibrosis. The secondary cardiomyopathy, as we have said, it can be a part of some systemic diseases, okay? So it may be infected, like uh, viral infection, bacterial infection, fungal infection, protozoal infection, spirochetal and rickettsial infections, okay? Or it can be a part of some metabolic disease or familial storage disease, like glycosin storage disease, mucopolysaccharidosis, macromatosis, and febris disease. Okay, so it can be a result of some deficiencies of electrolytes and nutrition as well. Okay, and as we have already said, it, it can be a part of connective tissue disorders. Okay, SMB, polyarthritis, nodosa, rheumatoid arthritis, progressive systemic sclerosis, and dermatomyositis. It can also be a part of infiltrations or gran granulomas, like in cases of amyloidosis a part of malignancy and sarcoidosis, 
okay it may be there in a patient who has some neuromuscular problems like a patient with muscular dystrophy myotonic dystrophy or it can be because of sensitivity or toxic reaction to alcohol radiation and drugs okay and the uh, other cause of secondary cardiomyopathy includes peripartum heart diseases. Okay, peripartum heart disease, it is one of the reversible causes of cardiomyopathy. That means after the peripartum period is over, okay, most of these patients who have peripartum heart disease or cardiomyopathy, they may have normal heart function. Okay, so this is one of the important cause of reversible cardiomyopathy. Okay, so that was the etiological classification, okay, which is important to know the etiology of different types of cardiomyopathy. But whenever we are talking about cardiomyopathy, we mostly talk about the morphological classification of cardiomyopathy. Okay, so morphologically, this cardiomyopathy it is divided into three main groups dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restricted cardiomyopathy. The most common one is dilated cardiomyopathy, where there will be left ventricular enlargement. Okay, so enlargement means enlargement of the chambers. Okay, hypertrophy means hypertrophy of the septum. Okay, so you have to be very care, careful regarding the terms. Okay, so there will be left ventricular enlargement with or without right ventricular enlargement, okay? So there must be left ventricular enlargement to say that the patient has dilated cardiomyopathy. There may or may not be right ventricular enlargement, okay? With impaired systolic function and patient or often presents with congestive heart failure, arrhythmias and emboline. Okay, so in dilated cardiomyopathy, the left ventricular enlargement will be there, resulting in systolic dysfunction of the heart, where the patient presents with congestive heart failure, different kinds of arrhythmias, and embolic phenomena. Okay. The second most common, other common one, is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there will be left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, so left ventricular hypertrophy will be there. That means the septum, the ventricular wall, it will be hypertrophied. But there will be disproportionate uh, hypertrophy of the uh, um, left ventricle. That means um, the septum, it will be more hypertrophied than the free wall. Okay, so if we talk about uh, this uh, left ventricular hypertrophy because of other conditions, like in cases of hypertension, in cases of aortic stenosis, okay, there will be left ventricular hypertrophy, but it will be proposed. That means the um, free wall as well as the septum, it, it will be hypertrophied equally. But if the patient has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there will be left ventricular hypertrophy and there will be disproportionate hypertrophy of the interventricular septum. Okay, so restrictive cardiomyopathy, it, it includes the condition in which endomyocardial scarring and myocardial infiltrations will be there, which results in right ventricular filling defect. Okay, so right or left ventricular filling defect. So mainly in this condition, there will be diastolic dysfunction. Okay, so diastolic dysfunction is first to occur in restrictive cardiomyopathy because of scarring and myocardial infiltration there will be problem with the diastole first and after some time okay there can be problem with the systole as well okay so do you have any problem till now so this is important okay morphological classification of cardiomyopathy it is important okay so just to demonstrate the things we have already discussed, okay, so this is the normal heart with normal left atrium, left ventricle. Now, this is dilated cardiomyopathy. You can see that the left ventricular dilatation is there, okay, and in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the left ventricle is hypertrophic. 
and in restricted cardiomyopathy, there will be uh, fibrosis and scarring and infiltration in the um, uh, left ventricle. Okay, so we'll be talking about individual of this uh, cardiomyopathies now. Okay, so firstly, dilated cardiomyopathy because it is one of the important um, and the most common uh, cardiomyopathy. Okay. So about one in three cases of congestive heart failure, it is because of dilated cardiomyopathy. So it is not only the commonest cause of cardiomyopathy, but it is also one of the important cause of congestive heart failure. Okay. So in dilated cardiomyopathy, there will be left ventricular systolic pump impairment or dysfunction with or without right ventricular systolic pump impairment leading to progressive cardiac dilatation and remodeling. Okay. So there will be problem with the systolic function of the left ventricle. Age of onset, it may occur at any age and most commonly it occurs in third to fourth decade of life. Okay, so ease of onset, it is generally in third to fourth decade of life. Okay, again, same thing. This is left atrium, this is left ventricular, ventricle, this is right ventricle, and this is right atrium. Okay, so you can compare it with the right ventricle. Okay, you can see the left ventricle, it is very much dilated. Okay, so this is dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay, so the causes, no causes are apparent in most of the cases. Okay, sometimes it may be familial as well. And it can be a result of myocardial damage produced by a variety of known and unknown infection, metabolic or toxic agents. Okay. And some of the reversible causes, as we have said, it can be pregnancy and the other reversible causes include alcohol abuse, thyroid disease, cocaine abuse, and chronic arrhythmias, mainly tachyarrhythmias, okay, tachycardias, okay? So these are the reversible causes, keep in your mind, okay? So alcohol abuse, pregnancy, thyroid disease, cocaine, and chronic tachycardia, okay? So these are the reversible causes. What are the clinical features then? Okay, so most of the patients, they may not have any symptoms for months and year after the LV dilatation. Okay? Some of the patients may also have symptoms of right or left heart failure. Okay? The patient may present with softness of breath. The patient may present with swelling of the limbs, palpitation. Okay? There can be symptoms of heart failure. And vague chest pain may be present, but uh, this typical angina, uh, vectors is unusual okay and some of the patient do not present with features of heart failure they may present with syncopal attack okay so syncope it is generally because of different types of uh, uh, arterial and ventricular arrhythmias and sometimes the syncope it may be because of sim systemic emboli Okay, so when we are asking for the investigations, uh, x-ray, it is the most uh, simplest of the investigation that we do, okay. In just x-ray, we can see that the cardiac shadow is in, enlarged, there is cardiomegaly. And ECC, it may show signs tachycardia, different arrhythmias, okay, as we have said. There can be tachy, uh, this arterial arrhythmias as well as ventricular arrhythmias, okay? And there can be conduction disturbance as well. And in echocardiography, there will be dilated left ventricle, decrease wall motion, which, is, which may be generalized, and there may be evidence of mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. Okay, and when we are doing catheterization, dilated hypercontractile, left ventricle will be evident. Okay, so you have to know about different ECC changes, signs tachycardia, along with different arrhythmias and conduction disturbance. And in echo, there will be dilated left ventricle and a decreased wall motion, which may be generalized, along with this mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. Okay. So this mitral and tricuspid regurgitation occurs because the ventricles, so the right and the left ventricles, they are enlarged, which keeps the mitral and the tricuspid valve um, um, incompetent. Okay. 
treatment, treatment of systolic heart failure. Okay, so I'll be again discussing about the um, uh, treatment of heart failure in, in uh, the other classes, but shortly regarding the uh, treatment of systolic heart failure. Okay, generally, if the patient has edema, okay, the first drug that has to be started is diuretics. Okay. So after the diuretics is started, and if the patient is still having some problems, signs and symptoms of heart failure, the other thing that we have to add is ACE inhibitor. Okay, and again, if the patient is having um, symptom or if the patient is ACE inhibitor intolerant, okay, the other drug to be added is ARBs, okay, angiotensin receptor blockers. And if the patient is still symptomatic, the others to be added is beta blockers and then spironolactones and then only disoxin. Okay, so this is in general regarding the treatment of systolic heart failure. But as I've already said, okay, I'll be discussing it in more detail in a class where I'll be talking about heart failure. Okay. An implantable defibrillator may decrease the risk of sudden death if the ejection fraction, okay, so the pumping capacity, if it is less than 35%, then implantable defibrillator may be used. Okay. The second important cardiomyopathy is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay, so it is characterized by left ventricular hypertrophy of a non dilated chamber without obvious causes like hypertension and aortic stenosis, okay? So in hypertension and aortic stenosis as well, okay, there will be left ventricular hypertrophy, but the difference between the ventricular hypertrophy in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and hypertrophy because of hypertension and aortic stenosis is disproportionate hypertrophy of the left ventricle. Okay, so in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there will be asymmetrical left ventricular hypertrophy. Asymmetrical left ventricular hypertrophy, often with hypertrophy of the interventricular septum. Interventricular septum will be hypertrophic more. Okay, and a dynamic LV outflow tract pressure gradient related to narrowing of the subaortic. So there will be a uh, narrowing of the subaortic area, which leads to left ventricular um, outflow tract pressure gradient. Okay, so this is again the diagram of the heart. This is right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Okay. So you can see that the ventricle, it is not dilated. But the ventricular wall, it is hypertrophied. And if you compare with the free wall, okay, the interventricular septum, it is hypertrophied more than the free wall. Okay, so I'll say it again. Okay, the interventricular septum, it is hypertrophied more than the free wall of the left ventricle. Okay. 60% of the cases of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, they are hereditary and are transmitted by autosomal dominant trial. Okay, so abnormalities are there in the chromosome 14 in familial forms, and about one half of the first degree relative of the patient with familial uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy have evidence of the disease. So it is very important that you screen the, the relatives, first degree relatives of the patient who has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay, so most of the patient they of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, they may be asymptomatic or, or they may have mild symptoms or they may be the relatives of the patient with, with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay, so we uh, very, frequently talk about this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because it is also one of the most common cause of sudden cardiac death okay so this is sudden cardiac death okay so you might have heard about some young people uh, who did not have any symptom or had many um, very minimal symptom and um, they may have died of this sudden cardiac death okay so during the autopsy and this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy it is one of the most common cause of sudden cardiac death in young patient. 
Okay, so it occurs in children or young adults with physical exertion. Okay, so most of the time, young patients when they die of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, they have some kind of physical exertion. Okay, and there can be symptoms because of diastolic dysfunction as well. Okay, so the symptoms of diastolic dysfunctions it includes dyspnea, syncope, angina, fatigue. Okay. Now the investigations. Chest X-ray, normal or mild to moderate increase in the cardiac uh, saddle may be there in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, okay? And in ECG, okay, left ventricular hypertrophy or widespread deep broad Q waves with arrhythmias and both arterial and ventricular arrhythmias may also be there, okay? So the chest X-ray, cardiomegaly and ECG with evidence of left ventricular hypertrophy. Along with that, there will be deep broad Q waves, arrhythmias, and different kinds of uh, atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. Okay, so uh, the clinical features, okay, when you are examining the patient, you may be able to uh, get double or triple apical pericordial impulse, okay. There may be evidence of fourth heart sound. So, fourth heart sound, it is, um, um, I think most of you know about this fourth heart sound, okay? So, fourth heart sound, it is produced because of forceful actual contraction against the non-compliant and stiff ventricle. And since a patient of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will have this stiff ventricle, okay? So, um, there will be a, a, this evidence of fourth heart sound as well. And rapidly rising arterial pulse and murmur, it is because of MR. Okay, so there can be systolic heart, diamond shift, usually begins well after the first heart sound, best heard at the lower sternal border as well as at the apex, where it is often pan systolic or holosystolic and blowing in quality. Okay, so it is generally because of mitral regurgitation. Okay, again, the investigation. Okay, so this slide is this page. Okay, so again, we'll be continuing with the investigations. Okay, so echocardiography it is uh, one of the most important investigations that we do. Okay, so as we have already said, left ventricular hypertrophy will be there, and septum it will be in hypertrophied 1.3 times more than the free wall. Okay, so LB hypertrophy often with the septum 1.3 times the thickness of the posterior left ventricular free wall. And the septum may also demonstrate unusual ground glass appearance due to myocardial fibrosis. The other finding that we get is systolic anterior movement of the my mitral valve against the hypertrophic septum and we may be able to get the mitral regurgitation. So these are the echocardiographic findings, okay? The most important one is left ventricular hypertrophy, which is dysproportionate. That means septum is 1.3 times more thicker than the free wall. Okay. So the treatment of this uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, okay, competitive sports and very strenuous activities should be avoided, okay? And dehydration should be avoided and diuretics should be used with caution. So the other uh, the other treatment modalities includes medical management. It can be done with uh, beta blockers. Okay, so it ameliorates the uh, angina pectoris and syncope, but does not protect against sudden cardiac death. Okay, and amiodarone it reduces the frequency of supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias. And the other drug to be used is non dehydropyrin calcium channel blockers. Okay, it may reduce the stiffness of the left ventricle, reduce the elevated diastolic pressure, increase the exercise tolerance, reduces the severity of upper tract pressure gradient. Okay, so dehydration should be avoided. So, uh, diuretics it should be um, avoided, okay? Sometimes there may be a role of surgical management in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, okay? So it may be in the form of surgery, uh, surgical myo 
Tommy or um, Mike Tommy. Okay, so in these procedure, okay, what happened, what uh, generally is done is the hypertrophic segment of the um, septum, interventricular septum. Okay, so it is removed as alcohol septal ablation. Okay, so alcohol is injected into the um, interventricular septum so that fibrosis will take place and the hypertrophic interventricular septum it will shrink its size. Okay, so these are the surgical management of a patient who has a hypertrophic cardiac myopathy, and uh, for the patient who are at high risk of sudden cardiac death. Okay, insertion of intercardiac device should be considered. Okay, so for high risk uh, patient for sudden cardiac death, okay, so intercardiac um, inter device should be uh, advised. Okay, so who are the patients who are at increased risk of sudden cardiac death? Okay, so you have to know about the patient who are at increased risk of sudden cardiac death okay so his, if there is any history of resuscitation okay so if the patient gives you history that the patient has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and if he gives the history that he has been resuscitated okay and if the patient gives you history that the patient has recurring syncopal attack okay and if the patient has ventricular tachycardia on ambulatory monitoring of the electrophysiological testing Okay, so you have done the electrophysiological uh, testing, and if there is any evidence of ventricular um, tachycardia, okay, then also we are at increased risk of um, the sudden cardiac death. And if the patient has failure to uh, of blood pressure to rise during exercise, so during exercise generally blood pressure it should raise. Okay, but if the patient's blood pressure it fails to Go up with exercise, okay, then they are also at risk of a sudden cardiac death. And if the patient has any of his first degree family members, first degree relatives who have history of sudden cardiac death, and a patient who have certain genetic mutation, okay, so these are the patients who are at increased risk of sudden cardiac death, and these are the patients which has to be considered for intercardiac device implantation, insertion, okay? So the major cause of mortality in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is sudden cardiac death, okay? So sudden cardiac death, the most important cause in young is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, okay? Now, the last uh, type of cardiomyopathy, it is restrictive cardiomyopathy, okay? So it is the least common cause of cardiomyopathy, okay? So we have the rigid non-compliant ventricular wall, abnormal diastolic function, okay? So in dilated cardiomyopathy, the systolic dysfunction will be there. And in restrictive cardiomyopathy, there will be diastolic dysfunction first. And later on, there can be systolic dysfunction as well. Okay, so abnormal diastolic function, the ventricular wall are excessively rigid and impaired ventricular feeling. Okay, and in late stages, systolic function is also impaired. Okay, so there will be infiltration in the left ventricle, okay, impairing the diastolic function. Okay, so the etiology, it may be infiltrated like in cases of sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, hemochromatosis, different kind of neoplasia, scleroderma, and radiation. Okay. Clinical features, there can be dyspnea, exercise intolerance, um, uh, weakness on examination, there will be elevated JBP, there will be edema, there will be hepatomegaly, there can be ascites and uh, S3 and S4. Okay, so we have talked about S4 and S3. S3, it is generally because of uh, rapid ventricular feeling. Okay, and if the patient has um, uh, S3, okay, so we have to be careful that the patient may be in failure. And Kussmaul sign, okay, so Kussmaul sign, it is generally the, the uh, JBP, it uh, 
decreases during inspiration, but in, if the patient has this restricted cardiomyopathy, okay, so there will be increase in JVP with inspiration. This is called the small sign, okay. So I'll be demonstrating this with uh, the YouTube video, which I'll uh, share at the end of the class, okay. So the restrictive cardiomyopathy um, for the investigations, chest x-ray, mild cardiomegaly with pulmonary congestion will be there, ECG source, low voltage, conduction disturbance, echo, thickening of the cardiac uh, structure will be there, normal or slightly reduced ventricular volume or systolic function can be there, okay? And when we do get cardiac catheterization, reduced cardiac output, elevation of the right ventricular and left ventricular in diastolic pressure will be there. Okay, so since the patient with this restrictive cardiomyopathy, they will have uh, diastolic dysfunction, okay? Management, it is often disappointing, okay? So because in systolic heart failure, we have a number of drugs which are used for the treatment of heart failure, but if the patient has diastolic failure, the treatment is just to um, treat the cause of diastolic heart failure. Okay, so it management it is very disappointing. Okay, and there may be role of anticoagulation, which is recommended to reduce the risk of embolization from the heart. Okay, so and anticoagulation it is mainly to prevent the thromboembolic phenomena, and the outcome that it generally occurs because of congestive heart failure or different kinds of arrhythmias, okay? So arrhythmias, they can again be because of different atrial arrhythmias or ventricular arrhythmias, okay? So we'll be going to the second half of the um, uh, class, okay? So uh, we will be talking about myocarditis, okay? So if you have pain, problem okay regarding this cardiomyopathy you can ask me at the end of the class okay so myocarditis it is the cardiac inflammation and is most commonly the result of infectious process frequently accompanied by autoimmune so there will be infection as well as some problem with the autoimmunity okay so what are the causes then okay so the causes, they include infective causes like viral myocarditis, Coxsackie V virus, adenovirus, hepatitis C virus, HIV virus, or it may be bacterial myocarditis, fungal myocarditis, protozoal, spirochetal, and rickettsia. It may be because of drug hypersensitivity, sensitivity to tetracycline antidepressant, antibiotics, and antipsychotic drugs. Clinical features, so most of the patients who have myocarditis, okay, so they may give history of preceding upper respiratory tract infection or flu-like syndrome, okay, viral nasopharyngitis or tonsillitis, okay. Clinical uh, spectrum asymptomatic with only transient STT abnormalities to form a condition with arrhythmias, acute consistent heart failure and early death, okay. So Initially, there will be features of URTI and flu-like symptom, and after that, okay, the patient may have, uh, may be asymptomatic. Some of the patient may be asymptomatic, and when we are doing the ECC, there can be some STT changes, okay, or the patient may also have permanent conditions with um, uh, very fetal arrhythmias, okay. Some of the patient may also present with features of congestive heart failure and early death. Okay. And in some patients, it simulates acute coronary syndrome with chest pain. Okay. So some of the patients, they may, may also present with chest pain, which may be confused with acute coronary syndrome. Okay. It may be confused with myocardial infarction or unstable angina. Okay. Investigations, ECG, as we have said, it shows STT abnormalities. Okay. STT abnormalities, it may be in the form of ST segment depression, or T wave inversion. Okay, along with that, okay, the patient may also have elevated troponins. Okay, cardiac biomarkers, mainly the troponins, they may also be raised. Okay, and the outcome with the patient who have myocarditis, most viral myocarditis is self-limiting and without any symptom. Acute viral myocarditis, especially when accompanied by severe LV dysfunction, may lead to dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay, 
So some may not have any sequelae after the episode, the heart function, systolic function, as well as the diastolic function. It may be normal, but in some of the patients, okay, they may also land up in dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay. And in some of the patients, okay, death may occur, and it is because of acute consistent heart failure, different tachyarrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, um, atrial flutter, ventricular fibrillation, ventricular flutter, and different de degrees of AV block. Okay, there can be first degree AV block, second and third degree or complete heart block. And for the treatment, okay, so uh, we have to counsel about the exercise. Okay, so this exercise, it may be deteriorous in patient with acute myocarditis. So this should not be any strenuous exercise till the ECG and the left ventricular function returns to normal. Okay, and treatment of uh, acute uh, congestive heart failure should be done. Okay, so again with the diuretics, with uh, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, beta blockers, okay, and spironolactones, and even desoxane. Okay. Can do the treatment of acute consistent heart failure and ECG monitoring. It is very crucial because most of the patients who have this myocarditis they die because of arrhythmias. Okay, so this should be done during acute illness and in patients with arrhythmias. Okay, so during the acute, acute phases and also in patients who has arrhythmias. Okay, and there may be role of cardiac transplantation in patient who has fallen in myocarditis. Okay, so shortly regarding myocarditis in patient with HIV, okay? So many have subclinical cardiac involvement in the form of pericardial effusion, arrhythmias, and neoplastic involvement, okay? So a patient who has HIV, they may have myocarditis, and it may be in the form of different pericardial diseases like pericardial effusion, arrhythmia, neoplastic involvement. And overt clinical manifestation is seen only in 10% of the patient. And the most common uh, this cardiac abnormality is left ventricular dysfunction. Okay, so the other cardiac involvement may be because of opportunistic infection as toxoplasmosis, neoplastic disorder, toxicity because of different antiretroviral drugs. Okay, the other one is bacterial myocarditis. Okay, so these are very uncommon and seen in patients with infective endocarditis with abscess formation can also occur in patients with diphtheria. That is called diphtheria, diphtheric myocarditis. Okay. The other one is giant cell myocarditis. Okay, so it is also a very rare uh, myocarditis of unknown cause, and it is characterized by rapidly progressive congestive heart failure and ventricular tachycardia. It occurs in third to fourth decade of life, and two third of the patient with acute myocarditis they die within one year. At autopsy, okay, there can be cardiac enlargement, ventricular thrombi, and area of necrosis, which is seen in both of the ventricles. And microscopically, sometimes we may be able to see giant cells with extensive inflammatory infiltrations. Okay, and for the treatment, immunosuppressive therapy has the role. Otherwise, in fulminant cases, cardiac transplantation. Lyme's disease it is caused by on spirochet, and about 10% of the patient develop cardiac symptoms during acute phase. Cardiac involvement are seen in form of left ventricular conduction abnormalities and left ventricular dysfunction. Treatment includes antibiotics with um, uh, amoxicillin, doxycycline, ceftriaxone, penicillin, and hospitalization is generally needed for ECG monitoring if the patient has second and third degree AV block, okay? So temporary pacemakers may be needed in patients with symptomatic left ventricular block. Chagas disease, okay, so it is caused by protozoa trichonema chusi. It is transmitted by insect vector and around 1% of the um, infected individuals have acute myocarditis. 
which results in two to three months and two third of the patient develop chronic myocardial damage in the form of cardiac chamber dilatation, fibrosis, thinning of the ventricular wall, and aneurysm formation. Cause of death is congestive heart failure and certain cardiac death secondary to arrhythmias. Okay, so the ECG when we do, we can get the evidence of low voltage ECG. There can be evidence of right bundle branch block, left anterior hemi block, complete AV block. Okay, and um, okay, so ECG classes will be taken afterward. Okay, so it is very difficult to describe about each and every term in ECG right now, but you will understand this after we take the ECG classes. So echocardiography, hypokinesia of the posterior left ventricular wall with preserved septal motion will be there. And for the treatment, treatment of congestive heart failure and arrhythmias and implantation of the pacemaker if the conduction system uh, disease is there or if the AV block is there. And there may be the role of anticoagulation. Okay, so that's all regarding this dilated, sorry, cardiomyopathy and